Well, hello, Beaver County, and welcome to, whoo, that was loud, Frank, <laughs> and welcome to your personal realtor with Eric McKenna. I am your humble host, REMAX Advanced Realtor, Eric McKenna, and myself, along with the incomparable Sir Frank Sparks, are here to inform and entertain you every Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. on Beaver County Radio. 1230 WBVP and 1460 WMBA. It is so great that you have chosen us this afternoon to spend a little bit of your time with. Thank you so much. Frank, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, they good to see you. fixed your mic, can you tell? You did fix my mic. <laughs> I if did. Any, well, you, well, it sounds like it's fixed. It's, it is, but it, I don't do that. Well, what do you know? We, we are live as we always are on Facebook Live. Along with, of course, our listening audience in the broad area coverage that Beaver County Radio has. If you are listening to us and you want to also participate in the show, there's multiple ways to do it. You can send me an email, very easy, it's sold at calleric.com. You can phone one of the two most famous numbers in all of Beaver County. That's the Beaver County Radio hotline, 724-843-1888. And 724-774-1888. And you may also join us on Facebook Live. Just go to Facebook and in the search bar, just type in my name, Eric McKenna. You'll see two listings come up. Choose the shorter one out of the two, and you will find us live there. And for all those who have already peeked in already, thank you so much. It is very, very humbling that uh, the show has continued on uh, in such a successful fashion. This is show number 42. Usually Frank gives me a little drum roll for that, but we didn't get that today. But that's okay. We're on show 42, and it is approximately, I believe, the fifth show that we have had since we moved from Saturday to Wednesday. You're looking at me all puzzled there, sir. got to be more than that. You think? Yeah. Well, uh, this little science experiment has started many, many moons ago, almost well, coming up on a year pretty soon. Uh, it was a brainchild of Mark Peterson and uh, Sir Frank Sparks. They approached me with the idea. I loved it. We kind of put it together, and um, I'm surprised 42 weeks in, they still kept me. <laughs> we, we started with an hour format on Saturday mornings. We expanded to 90 minutes. Then I was renewed for 2017, which was awesome. Then the opportunity to expand the show one more time to a whole two hours was afforded me, which I certainly leaped at, and also the ability to go to prime time. So we left our Saturday position in the WBVP and WMBA programming schedule, and we are now here with you every Wednesday from 2 to 4. And the purpose of this show, as we say every week, is to not only demystify real estate the very best we can, is to answer your questions, talk certainly a little bit about the work that I do and the work that realtors do in Western PA, and without a doubt, um, have a little fun. Six. Have a little fun. Are we doing sign language again, Frank? Six is the number. <sighs> this is the sixth show on go. the Wednesday. <laughs> See, Frank has to be exact. and well, Frank has I went to back be, and looked. Frank has to be very, um, how would you put this? Frank has to be very precise. For those of you who know Frank from WBVP and WMBA, you know Frank is Mr. Beaver County Radio. He's on pretty much every show. Um, or he's involved in every show in some capacity, as Frank is also does the dual, dual multiple duty. Well, not dual duties, but multiple duties here at the station as the programming director. I try. You do a great job. Thank you. I and uh, I know you're appreciated by all involved in the station. So uh, once again, we give a little pat on the back because you deserve it. Thanks. Appreciate it. Frank started out as the producer of this show, and for those who are joining us for the very first time, uh, the show evolved over time, and I had uh, the lofty ideals that I was going to run my own show completely. I had all these ideas about running the board and being the producer and how I was going to do this and how I was going to do that, uh -huh. and uh, as soon as I got in here, the first couple of weeks, I realized what my role was and how important content was, and you know, learning this whole radio thing, it was immediately imperative to me that Frank uh, took a broader role within the show so i like to say frank is my adopted co-host frank is not a realtor but that adds some extra spice to the show as well frank's allowed to get a little feisty where i can't <laughs> <laughs> so so some wonderful two uh those who have popped in here i just saw my client jim snyder uh, how are you jim uh, so many of you coming in uh we want to thank some people right off the bat here for their un 
They're undying loyal. Is undying the right word? Unyielding. They're unyielding loyalty. How about that? That's true. Unyielding undying loyal would be right. Undying is a little, yeah. a little, a little yeah. too much gravity to that. Yeah. You know, that's more like a. I think of like Games of Thrones and those TV shows. You know, your undying loyalty. But uh, you know, I want to thank those who provide us unyielding support, and that would be the wonderful Facebook group called Moon Connects. It's a plural. There's two now. We're talking about Moon Connects and the two creators and originators and moderators of that group, Mr. Stephen Dish and Ms. Caroline Tronzo. Thank you so much for your support and all the members of that group who have been very supportive of this show, myself and Frank, and all the uh, the broadcasting opportunities. But thank you for your support. It is does not go without notice. And as typical in this show, in the first couple of minutes, we kind of try to get a little recap of what we've done over the last couple of weeks and also, you know, just catch up with Frank and see what's been going on in the world of uh, Sir Frank Sparks. So we'll just get right to that. Frank, how has your week been since low, since I've seen you last? Eh, you know, it's been, what does that mean? It's just been silent, you know, good, mm-hmm. good, peaceful week. And sometimes those are good things and sometimes they're not. I'm no, not I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. We've got a really cool thing going on here tomorrow that you're talk gonna, about it. You're going to have to check it out. What is it? Because I know you're a fan of the doors. I'm actually not. Well, that <laughs> but that style, era that, of music, right, that right, era of music, I, I mean. yes, I absolutely am. That's that era. I mean. Okay. So we have this gentleman. They're called the Next Doors. Familiar with them? Okay. And he's going, his name's Jim. Okay. Go figure. Okay. And uh, he is coming in tomorrow on Notes on Entertainment. You've met Scott Tate. I right? certainly have been on the show with Scott. Okay. All right. So Scott Tate, his Notes on Entertainment that we have every Thursday at 1130 on my show on Teleform. Jim from the next doors is coming in tomorrow. Okay, in full character, as Jim Morrison. As Jim Morrison. What time is this happening? Eleven thirty-five on Facebook Live tomorrow. That on is our awesome. Website. On our that WBBP. is awesome. Eleven thirty-five so, tomorrow on WBBP WNBA's Facebook page. We'll do it live plus on the air here. And he's uh, coming in a full regalia. Yeah, he's going to recite some of Jim Morrison's poems and oh, it's this is he's playing be, it all to the hilt. Yeah, is he coming in great. character? Yeah, I mean oh, he's yeah. not just a visual character. He's, no, he's it's the whole thing. Yep, yep, voice everything. Name it. You got. It. I mean, it's you just, just raised a very interesting possibility great. here. Let's 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 take Go that ahead. thinking even further now. Let's take it to the next level. You know what I think I need to do. What? I think, actually, I think the show begs for this. I think we need to get the hottest Kiss tribute band imaginable to come in here live on your personal realtor. That would be cool. That would be cool. The very top picture that I'll be sharing later on WBBP and WNBA is him. That looks just like Jim Morrison from the photos I've seen. Amazing. Amazing. The Good next stuff. doors. Good yes. stuff. They're Good a, stuff. They're a local group that. Uh, huh. That's a whole cottage industry, you know. Tribute bands. It is. That's him. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Make sure you post that I on uh, WBVP and WNBA's Facebook page. Okay, I will. Yeah, that sounds like a good time. Yeah. Very good time. I'm looking forward to it. I can't Very wait. good time. I can't yeah. Wait. So yeah, music's a big part of my life. As many of you listen to the show, as you know, um, I have a. Uh, and in my prior life, before I was a realtor, I owned a company called Boogie Street Guitars, did a lot of cool things in the guitar uh, industry, had some opportunities afforded to me that I jumped at, and uh, really had just a great, great 15 years there. Music's a big part of my life. I bring this up only because one of my old Boogie Street Guitars clients here, and I didn't have many in Pennsylvania, I will tell you, I did a lot of interstate shipping, didn't sell much in Pennsylvania, but actually one of my Ohio clients moved to Pittsburgh, and guess who is the realtor? So that uh, it was kind of like a part of my old life and part of my new life were coming together and merging. It was very, very cool. Jerry and his wife, Linda, thank you so much for remembering me, reaching out, talking about the work that I do as a realtor, and hiring me as their personal realtor. Very cool and very appreciated, I can assure you. So there you go, Frank, the meeting of the two worlds there. That would yeah. be cool. Yeah, it's very cool. And he, I had sold, uh, I had sold him quite a few guitars, and we had a good little trip down memory lane. Lane, and now I'm helping them move. Um, they're, they're. I'm sure you won't mind me saying this. They are upgrading significantly. Both have had tremendous careers in what they do, and they're coming to Pittsburgh. The, um, he got a job downtown with a very established firm, and she is. Uh, ha- she's got a lead on another. If she gets this job, it's going to be wonderful for her. 
they have started a family. They have a five year old and two year old. And um, hey, it was good to hear from him. I thought I was just he was just reaching out to, to say hi because that was cool in and of itself. But uh, they're reaching right. out with a purpose, and uh, that was very good. And it was, what's ironic about that is um, they reside in Strongsville, Ohio. Oh, I know where that's at. Right. And, you know, I always kid with Mark, like, how far does the signal go? You know, and he has listened to the show, and he, cause he came across it just scanning the dial. Okay. Didn't even know I had the show. And he said, he started wondering, is this Eric McKenna the same guy from Boogie Street all those years ago? It can't be. He started listening, and sure enough, he recognized the voice, and one thing led to another. So how cool is that? That was very, that very, that was very, very, very cool. Yes. But, um, very, very blessed uh, to continue the work that we do here. Friends, the last uh, – oh, here we go. You can't Oops. do that, Frank. Oh, my bad. That's all right. Yeah. Well, Fra- I, Frank is knocking over our Facebook Live here. Oh, I didn't know you had <laughs> we, are, we are so that's, – oh, that's very cool. Yes. The that, and they can find that where, Frank, on, the, on your um, – on, Not yet. I, well, it's on our website on beavercountyradio.com, but turn let me back turn it back. Me, so, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Friends, uh, yeah, no, that's no, fine. Uh, <laughs> your personal realtor was so busy. <laughs> this has been <laughs> usually what I do, and Frank's laughing. I, I want to beat Frank <laughs> to the punch because what's going to happen is as soon as I give Frank a chance, probably at the start of the next break, if I don't say it, he's going to say it. I don't schedule anything typically Wednesdays because, to prepare for the show. I mm-hmm. try not to. Mm-hmm. Okay, I had um, – and I'll share with this. I want to send out best wishes to my father-in-law, uh, Nelson Cumston, who is uh, in Allegheny General. Um, he's uh, oh, not of the I'm best, not of the best, best health, but he's hanging in there and he's fighting very hard. All of us have uh, got Nelson in our prayers. And I want to send out uh, for those of you who believe. Um, please keep Nelson, uh, my father-in-law, in in your prayers. It'd be greatly appreciated. But I've been working with a family, uh, all of our family getting together, and you know the schedules and so forth. So I did have to work today, Frank, which is unusual because I don't work Wednesdays, <laughs> you know. And so, that, well, at least this is my excuse, anyways. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you know, I videotape this show, and uh, I, I bring a lot of um, the things from home here to prepare for the show. And I have a briefcase, you know, kind of like a little catalog case, and. I have my video cameras and my cords and my have you know I got all this good stuff and I uh, wasn't able to get back home today in time to grab all that stuff, Frank, and get here on time. So starting this show on time is certainly of utmost importance, of course. Mm-hmm. So we're here a little unprepared on the video front. The only video operation we have is our Facebook Live. And thank goodness we have that. You know we're going strong with it. But I'm going to have to use that particular footage to also do my video for the whole show. And the most awkward thing is I didn't have my tripods. <laughs> so That could be awkward. So here's what I got going on, Frank. Uh, as you can see, which you so kindly almost knocked over, I have our Facebook Live. I have it sitting and working on top of a Glenn Campbell CD on the front and being propped up by a... Conway Twitty CD on the back. <laughs> and we're propping up this phone so we can at least keep the Facebook Live uh, feed going. So I appreciate all of the patience here. And for all of you that have tuned in, thank you so much. Again, the numbers to reach us, uh, 888. Wait, hold on, Frank. You can actually have these committed memories by now. Excuse me. 724. I'm mixing all these numbers. Don't do this to me. 724-843-1888 and 724-774-1888. Uh, join us on Facebook Live. Any questions you may have. Now, to, before we have to take our first break, to recap what we've done the last two weeks, because we're going to finish it up this week. There's been two subjects we've talked in the past two weeks. One was my thoughts on what's known as dual agency and why I don't use it in my realtor practice, why I don't feel uh, I'm very uncomfortable with it. And while it's legal and while it can be done ethically, I don't believe in it. And dual agency, for those who don't know, it's pretty simple. It's the ability for a realtor who's listing a house to also accept an offer and work with a potential buyer. So there you have the listing and you're working with the seller, but you also have the ability to work with the buyer and then represent both in the same transaction. We spent a good amount of time as to why I don't believe in that, why I don't think that serves the public well or the consumer well. And Frank certainly teed off on his thoughts on the matter from a consumer standpoint about he thinks, how'd you put it? It's absolutely insane to do that. Something like that. Eh, that's, clean, <laughs> that's pretty much cleaning it up, yeah. And we compared it to a lot of things. And we can talk about that. If you have more questions about that, let me know. Send me an email at soul at callwear.com or you can call in or on Facebook Live is fine. 
The Steve, Mr. Stephen Dish has just checked in on Facebook Live, and I had just mentioned Stephen a little while ago. Uh, Stephen, in addition to Caroline Trunzo, uh, the creators and the originators and the moderators of the Facebook Live group, Moon Connects, have been unyielding in their support of me, this show, uh, Your Personal Realtor with Eric McKenna. And for that all, we will be everly humble and grateful. Steve, if you can see me on here, thank you so much to you and Caroline for uh, all the support and the promotion. They have... Um, it's so kind. They, uh, I think both of them, you know, they, they like the work I, I do. They've talked to some of my buyers. They initially, as we met, I kind of knew them anyways, but once we met on the web, they really were comfortable with the kind of work I, I did. And they had, uh, they were just really great in referring me and promoting what we're doing because we do really good business. And I'm, I'm proud of that. So to Steven, if you're out there, I can see you there, uh, buddy among, amongst the people on Facebook live. Thank you so much uh, for all your support. It does not go unnoticed or unappreciated. That's for certain. And I know Frank feels the same exact way. Although Frank's busy on the keyboard over there at the moment. But. <laughs> <laughs> so, Job is never done. Here, here's the thing. See, you know, after 42 weeks, I get to know Frank a certain way. He gets to know me a certain way. And we know each other on air. And then we know each other off air. So we've got both going, hey, Kelly, how are you? Good to see Kelly on Facebook Live as well. Um so Frank thinks I don't know what's going on with, you know, but he's over there doing this, all these magical buttons and stuff. And, you know, I know what has to be done to keep the show running. And then I know when there's extracurricular activity <laughs> over there. I really so. am working, though. <laughs> I really am working, honestly. Okay. Well, if you say so, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So we did dual agency. And we also spent some time last week talking about what I, I, what I commit to my buyer clients. And I think it's a good point of reference that you, somebody who's getting ready to purchase a home, whether it's your first home or you're getting ready to sell your house and purchase, or maybe you're downsizing, you know, whatever the circumstances are, if you're getting ready to choose a realtor to work with, I gave you bullet points with explanations on what I feel, what I absolutely feel is what any consumer should ask of their buyer agent or their buyer realtor. We spent some good time on there and we took a lot of questions as well. Now today on our show, we're going to complete the trifecta of the three, the dual agency, what's expected of a buyer agent. And today we're going to talk about my favorite, which is what is expected of a listing agent, what my tenants are, what I commit to my clients, what I promise, and what I, I expect no less also from my clients as well, because it is a two-way street. It's a partnership. And if you're going to have effective effective work with a realtor you need to, it needs to be a give and take so we're going to get into that on the other side of the break friends you're listening to your personal realtor with eric mckenna here on beaver county radio i am your humble host remax advanced realtor eric mckenna and we will be right back i think <laughs> How would you like to have lunch with your banker? Well, unless you're a big shot business person, that probably isn't going to happen. But here's the good news. You can still act like a big shot and have lunch with all the people in charge at your financial institution if you are a member at Friendly Federal Credit Union. That's because the annual luncheon meeting has been scheduled for August 26th at 1 p.m. at the Fez in Aliquippa. Tickets are available right now at Friendly Federal Credit Union in Aliquippa or Baden. Hurry, don't miss out on this opportunity to hobnob with the people who run your credit union over lunch on Saturday, August 26th. Let's do lunch. Sign up today at Friendly Federal Credit Union, Equal Housing Lender, member NCUA. Join us Saturday morning at 8.05 until 9.45 for the Saturday Sports Slam, featuring the best in local sports talk. Major League Baseball's All-Star break has come and gone, and now comes the urgent business at hand. Can the Pirates seriously compete in the National League Central? The Saturday Sports Slam is brought to you by Rochester Manor and Villa, J&J Spratt Funeral Home in New Brighton, and Stone Creek Structures in Aliquippa. Join us at 8.05 Saturday morning for the Saturday Sports Slam. When you're a kid, Idlewild is a place full of adventure. There are rides that are just your size, treats to tickle your taste buds, and special friends like Daniel Tiger to touch your heart. When you're a grown-up, 
Idlewild is every bit as magical, every bit as memorable, every bit as fun. Idlewild and Soak Zone, because you love to see them smile. Save up to $19 on select days when you buy online at idlewild.com. Lisa Lachina just sent me a note. She is all excited about summer because she's got a rebate program. She actually sent me a picture of a rebate check. Of course, I can't cash it, but somebody did for $500. Rebates up to $500 right now on your purchases at Lachina Drapery and Blind Factory. So it goes like this. You know the name Lachina. They've been in Pittsburgh for 65 years doing what they do best, custom window treatments and blinds. Lisa and the design team will come to you with a no-obligation shop and home appointment, and all you have to do is call 412 665 4900. That's 412 665 4900. Take advantage of this rebate opportunity now because it won't last by calling Lachina Drapery and Blind Factory. 412 665 4900. Now is the time to do what you've wanted to do and beautify your home from the inside out. Log on to LachinaDrapery.com. <laughs> I, you brought me back early. I didn't even have my headset on. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I thought you were ready to go. No, well, there you go. See, yeah, that's you get for assuming, Frank. <laughs> Friends, welcome back to Your Personal Realtor with Eric McKenna. I am your host, humble host, REMAX Advanced Realtor. And uh, we are here discussing today the expectations of what I believe to be should be your expectations if you're choosing someone to come and list your home. And uh, we spent a good amount of time uh, talking last week about uh, what you should expect out of a buyer's agent, the things to look for. And these are tenants that I promise to my clients, as I'm sure all good realtors do. I make, I make an assumption now, Frank. And prior to that, we talked about dual agency the week before and why I don't believe in it, why I don't think it's good for the consumer. And again, again dual agency is the ability for an, a realtor to have a listing to sell a house and also be able to work with a potential buyer and represent both parties in a transaction. Legal can be done ethically. I don't believe in it. I don't practice it. And I don't think it's the best thing for a consumer. And we spend a great amount of time talking about that. We will do it again today. If you have questions in regards to that, you can certainly bring that up. But we're going to talk today about the things that I promise to my home sellers when they're considering using me to be their agent. And before we get into it, I do want to send a special hello out. Yes, I do to Mr. and Mrs. Barry Struble from Hopewell. They have been a listener to this show and uh, they reached out and I am honored to have the opportunity to meet with them. We had a great, uh, great meeting and I hope to be doing business uh, with the two of them very much and looking forward to being their personal realtor. But to Barry, Thank you for that phone call. It's so nice to meet you and your wife last night. And Frank, they tried to feed me. <laughs> it's a, that's a we, Beaver County we, thing. We talk about it. it is a Beaver County thing. And I, you know, uh, I had just eaten, but boy, it, it, there was oh man, Mrs. Struble had meatballs there, and that's my food. You know that, right? I mean, that was it. Took everything in my power not to <laughs> consume those. Let me tell you. But uh, so kind and so nice, and thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Struble, for choosing me as your personal realtor. Look, look forward to working with you both, and I appreciate your kindness more than you'll ever know. I really do. So, Frank, we're going to just jump right into this. Sure. It's, it's because we're going to leave the concept of dual agency behind, we've covered it. I know it kind of, like, fires you up. Is there any, like, parting shots you want to throw out there about dual agency? I mean, you know, I mean, outside of just screaming at me that, you know, you, it, who would do it, right? You know the saying, don't drown in a rule in your day? <sighs> no. <laughs> remember that from back in the day? I, I I vaguely remember that. Yes, we'll put that to to Fra Frank. To Frank order agrees. Here. Frank agrees with me that you just should not hire one agent. Or one, one agent shouldn't handle both the seller and the buyer in a transaction because neither is going to be served well. We've vetted that out. We've talked about it. But again, the way to reach us is seven two four eight four three eighteen eighty eight and seven two four seven seven four eighteen eighty eight. If you have a question about dual agency or what to expect from 
uh, an agent if you're going to buy a house, which we've talked in the last two weeks. Any questions about that, by all means, let us know. You can email me at sold at calleric.com. And, uh, you know, Frank is uh, Frank will be interested in talking with you. But don't let Frank get to you before me. You know, when you call in to talk to me, make sure Frank doesn't give his thoughts on the wages. I don't want you to be skewed in your opinion. He's so vehemently against it, <laughs> <laughs> as I am as well. Okay, so if you did tune in last week and you were, you're listening a little bit to what I promised my buyer clients as their buyer agent, you're going to notice some similarities here is what I also promise my seller clients. If you're getting ready to list your house and you happen to call me and we, we sit down and talk, these are the things that I'm going to promise to you, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if you choose me as your personal realtor. First and foremost is probably a little different than what you may assume. I mean, everybody's going to talk about their ethics. Of course we are. But the very first thing that I put up there is privacy. And we spoke about privacy last week and why that's important. And, and you know, my you know, my thoughts are, as, you know, as my clients, you can expect our business together to remain confidential between us. I will always seek your permission if I need to discuss our business with a third party. And why I put that at the forefront is, again, I take great pride and I take the concept of a fiduciary relationship with my client very, very seriously. As my client as a home seller and I'm there to serve and market your home we're going to have discussions at the inception as we move forward as we prepare for listing as we do paperwork and then all as we obviously set a price together and as we move forward with showings and so forth we're going to get to know each other a little bit you know ultimately you the client are going to determine how much we get to know each other and you know what you reveal and so forth about your circumstances but I always want to encourage my my sellers to be as honest as they can with me and uh, most of them do, to my knowledge. And I want that type of relationship. You know, if we go th- go through this process and you're saying to me, hey, you know, uh, you know, it's been a couple months and I, I know, Eric, you know, you wanted to list at this price and I wanted a little higher than this and, you know, it's not working and I, I'm, re- I'm willing to come down on this price. You may also feel comfortable saying, but I need to have this out of my home. I can't take any less than this for this piece of property. You know, that's really an honest uh, conversation, and that's one that should be private between us for a lot of obvious reasons. Would you not agree? Yes. So, as far as <laughs> so, being that that's the case, that ultimately leads into why I don't do the agency because I have to keep that information private, completely private. And to enter another into another contract with a buyer or something, you know, that's going to con- it's going to conflict on what I, I'm trying to do for the seller. So, again, we won't get into buyer uh, dual agency again, but into my seller, I commit to you to keep your information and your conversations with me private. But, again, the more open and honest, and, and it gets it comes down to the goals. You know, where where do you want to go? You know, obviously, if you're selling your house, you're going somewhere. I may be helping you find a new home, or you may be moving. You know, I, in some instances, I've got a client recently who's going to Florida. You know, they had a they had a house down there already, and they were kind of jockeying between the two. It's time in their life; their kids have moved on, and they have their own wonderful families and lives. And it's time for these two to go to Florida, so they have a spot to go. But the whole coordination of everything, and the closing, and the time frames, and the dates, and all that's involved in the process, you know, I encourage complete honesty, and I and I I, I encourage uh, all my customers to bring me into the process. Don't hold back. You know, whether it's a concern or heaven forbid, you know, sometimes I hear the word fear come up. You know, I, I sometimes this can be not scary. Scary is the wrong word, but you know, this is a big decision. Selling a piece of property is a multi step process. And, you know, the word scary should never be put into real estate, but, you know, sometimes people are fearful of change or fear of uh, unknowns there. And it's our job to, you know, to basically tap out those fires, you know, those, those fires of fear or, indecision and make things easy smooth them over you know do the do the heavy lifting for our clients but to do all that we need information and we need your honesty and we need we ask you for a lot we ask you know to understand your goals and to but that's again you're entrusting us with a lot of information that we need to keep private you know it's 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 no different than the privacy you should have with your physician it's no different than the privacy you should have with your attorney you know i mean it's you know and I'm not going to say that you know what we do is weighted in the same gravity as those two 
career paths at all. But but being a realtor is a serious business, and you we are dealing with more than likely the biggest asset you have, the most expensive thing you have purchased, and now are getting ready to sell. So you know we all all good realtors, and that's most of us, certainly uh, take very seriously the homes of our clients and their goals in real estate and where they want to go. So again, privacy is at the forefront of everything that I do in my relationship with my clients. Frank, you're looking at me a little, little cockeyed there. Do you, uh, do you agree? Privacy is number one, brother. Yep. So, okay. So we're on the same page and it's, mm. um, and it was, and it was interesting because Frank and I had a couple conversations after last show when we talked about what a buyer's, I'm sorry, what a consumer can expect from a buyer's agent if you're hiring a realtor to help you find a house. And privacy was at the forefront of that conversation as well. And, uh, you know, everybody wants to walk around and say, oh, I'm honest and I'm genuine and I'll, I, can, I can communicate with you and I can do all, I can do this, I can do that, and you can expect this and you can expect that. That's good. You know, you can, you can throw a lot, a lot of superlatives about our character and all that good stuff. Of course we can. But is there any substance behind it? Do you have an order you know, do you have, have you have you has your agents or has your realtor thought out how important all of these steps are in their presentation, their delivery, and that coveted fiduciary relationship with their client and how it's guarded? And I have privacy at the very top, no question about it. Now, not surprisingly, so the next tenant is honesty, and the way I word it is pretty simple: I will conduct all business with you honestly. I will provide you my honest assessment of your home's current market value and any needed recommendations for upgrades, staging, or showing that will enable us to sell your home for maximum market dollar. Now, what does maximum market dollar mean? That means simply this. We want to sell your house, especially now, because it's a really good seller's market right now. We've talked about that in prior weeks. It's a very good seller's market. We want to maximize the value for your house. Of course we do. That's your goal. You want to sell your house for the most money you possibly can. Now, there's a caveat there, you know, and this is something that unless you really deal with real estate on a regular basis, and I'm going to say a lot of people don't understand this, and, you know, and I hope I can clarify to those who really you know, don't work with real estate or don't pay any attention to it. You know, you can't, if you have a piece of property that sits on Maple Street on the corner and you've lived in there 40, 50 years and you're getting ready to sell, to you, that house, in your mind, it might be worth $200,000. I may come in and show comparables and show market reports, you know, easy stuff, nothing really hard to figure out here, but we're going to show comparables to you as to why it's really only worth about $150,000. So you and I now have a difference of opinion of, you know, Fifty thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. The question that's often asked to me is, Well, Eric, why can't I just, you know, put it out there for two hundred thousand and uh, you know, granted, you tell me the market's only worth about a hundred and fifty, but what if I get lucky and someone gives me, you know, two hundred thousand? Or someone comes and gives me one ninety. And that's a pretty good response, wouldn't you say, Frank? You know, it's a guttural response. Yes, it is. The difference is, it is, it is a guttural response. Uh, the, the difference is, unlike trading, well, I got, just to throw an aside at you, okay? I guess I understand that philosophy from the consumer side. And I understand it because I, in my prior life, I was a guitar dealer. And in the beginning of that journey that I had in guitars, I was basically a horse trader. I was going to guitar shows and buying and selling and sometimes buying and selling the same guitar at the same show. And it really was, you know, throwing numbers back and forth indiscriminately. And, you know, sometimes numbers were thrown out that were outrageous, but it, it was a different kind of sale. But I understand that mentality that, hey, let's try to maximize our dollar. Let's really, you know, hey, it, it, this, this realtor says our house is really only worth market-wise $150,000. Well, you know, pooey on him. You know, we're going to put it out there for two hundred. and let's just see what happens. Hey, maybe we'll get an offer for one seventy. That's still, you know, $20,000 higher than he's saying it's worth. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Well over 90% of all residential real estate deals have a mortgage or note or promissory note or some kind of financing 
behind them. That means a bank, a savings and loan, an investment house, or a personal individual potentially funding this is going to make a commitment to the person buying and the person buying will be the borrower. Because this house is a note is being put on this house, the house has to appraise, meaning no bank is going to give a loan for $200,000 or something close to $200,000 on a house that isn't worth that amount of money. Because if indeed the borrow, borrower defaults, the bank can't sell the property and get the money that they, they loaned out. It's pretty simple. They're not going to lend money on a piece of property that is not worth it. So the bank or the financial institution, the savings and loan, or even a personal individual who has the money and is funding it, they will hire an appraiser. The appraiser's job is to go out and verify what the house is indeed worth at that location geographically based upon the ins and outs of the home and the demographics involved and how the house is built, the whole nine yards, and then put an assessment give their professional opinion as a appraiser what the house is worth. So if your realtor is saying with all these comparables and all this information, the house is only worth 150 in the market and you go and put a price of 200,000 or even 180. Okay. Out there, there's a good possibility that even if we get a buyer that wants to give you 170, let's say it probably against their, agent's best advice because i'm sure the agent's saying hey it's only worth 150 (laughs) but let's just say someone wants to theoretically overpay for your house if you use market value as the benchmark they were overpaying odds are likely when they go for their financing they're not going to get their loan and i hate this word they're not going to get their loan bought the bank is not going to approve the mortgage so it does not do you any good as a home seller to overprice your house. Now, we could do a whole show on how we want to price homes. And we could do a whole show on, you know, some some realtors believe that, you know, they should be a little aggressive and then they can bargain down. And I have my own philosophies on listing homes as well. And I want to maximize my client's price and maximize my client's yield. Meaning when we close, I want the, my client to get the most possible for their home. But I'm very frank with my clients as well. And while I do work for them, I do very tactfully and very pragmatically explain, hey, this is what the market is. You know, if you're if you want to be an extra five or ten thousand dollars higher, you know, we can do that. If you want to be an extra fifteen to twenty thousand dollars higher than current market, I don't recommend we do that. And if you want to be really out of market, I probably won't take the listing meaning that I'm not going to take a, pro- a property that is so overpriced and then put, hang my shingle on there. And that's for a selfish reason because I don't want my shingle hanging my name, my rider, my shingle underneath the for sale sign. Don't want that hanging outside your house for a year, two, or three. And that happens sometimes. Granted, I want the business and I want to work with you and do the very best I can. But if we cannot agree on price and there's a significant difference in what I believe our, your house can sell for, compare to ultimately where you want to be if that difference is too great i just won't simply i simply won't take the listing and that's to protect both of us so my friends that is the brothers johnson i hear it coming in and frank is sending me to another break we will come back on the other side of the break and talk about the next tenant that i commit to my home sellers and that is communication you are listening to your personal realtor with eric mckenna on beaver county radio and we'll be right back Lisa Lachina just sent me a note. She is all excited about summer because she's got a rebate program. She actually sent me a picture of a rebate check. Of course, I can't cash it, but somebody did for $500. Rebates up to $500 right now on your purchases at Lachina Drapery and Blind Factory. So it goes like this. You know the name Lachina. They've been in Pittsburgh for 65 years doing what they do best, custom window treatments and blinds. Lisa and the design team will come to you with a no-obligation shop and home appointment. And all you have to do is call 412 665 4900. That's 412 665 4900. 
Take advantage of this rebate opportunity now because it won't last by calling Lachina Drapery and Blind Factory. 412-665-4900. Now is the time to do what you've wanted to do and beautify your home from the inside out. Log on to LachinaDrapery.com. Hello, friends. This is REMAX Advanced Realtor Eric McKenna with CallEric.com and host of Your Personal Realtor on 1230 WBDP and 1460 WMBA. I really hope you are enjoying today's show. Friends, did you know that I can be your personal realtor? That's right. If you're looking to list your home or buy a new home, call or text me today at 412-613-4466. That's 412-613-4466. Or send me an email at sold at calleric.com. That's sold at calleric.com. I just love it when listeners become clients. So why not contact me today and let me put my social media advertising to work for you. Together, we can reach your real estate goals. This is your personal realtor, Eric McKenna, with Remax Advanced Realtors and calleric.com. Be sure and follow the Pirates all season long and do your part to root them on by listening to the exciting game action on Beaver County Radio. Local coverage is presented in part by Town Square Restaurant, Suman Automotive, Roberts Roadside Inn, Falcone's Moon Township Family of Dealerships, Medicine Stop Pharmacy, Freedom United Federal Credit Union, Center Exit Tire, St. Barnabas Beaver Meadows, Dogs on the Run in East Palestine, Beaver County Children and Youth Services, Friendly Federal Credit Union, and Beaver County Radio, WBBP and WMBA. Are you a racing fan? Whether you're a casual fan or a race junkie like me, or you just like to talk anything motorsports, Beaver County Radio has the perfect show, and it's just for you. I'm Frank Sparks. Join me every Saturday right after the Saturday Sports Slam for the lead lap from the pole position of your radio dial of 1230 WBBP and 1460 WMBA. Sure, we'll talk about the big boys, but our main focus is going to be just like Beaver County Radio, and we'll be talking local racing from the local tracks, drag strips, and arenas. So tune in this Saturday and every Saturday for the lead lap from the pole position of your radio dial, 1230 WBDP and 1460 WMBA. The lead lap is being brought to you in part by Boland Machine, sponsors of the Boland Hot Lap, the Pennsylvania Hot Rod Company, and of course, Beaver County Radio, 1230 WBBP and 1460 WMBA. Find out what's going on in Beaver County and around the world every weekday afternoon at noon. It's the Noonday Report with Pat Septak, an expanded look at local news with sports and special features. It's Noonday on Beaver County Radio, 1230 WBBP and 1460 WMBA. And we're back. Friends, we are back. Once again, you're listening to Your Personal Realtor with Eric McKenna. I'm your humble host, REMAX Advanced Realtor Eric McKenna, here every Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. on Beaver County Radio, 1230 WBVP and 1460 WMBA. I am joined each week, as usual, by the one and only, the incomparable, the Mr. Jack of all trades here, Sir Frank Sparks. We're here, our last segment before we head off to the news here. And we're going to talk a little bit about, we're not going to get through this, Frank, probably in the next uh, eight or minutes. It's going to take a little longer than that. We're going to talk about uh, the third tenant that I promised my home listers, my home sellers, and that is communication. But before we do that, I want to mention one of our great sponsors, Frags Tags in downtown Coriopolis. That's right, Frags Tags on Fifth Avenue in Coriopolis. you got to contact these great people for all of your title transfer and notary needs you can contact them at 412-264-3018 again it's 412-264-3018 go see the great people at frags tags jonathan and his wife tell them your personal realtor sent you they will take great care of you and uh you can call them after 3 a.m they're fine with that 
We're kidding. <laughs> we like to razz our sponsors a bit, especially Mr. Matt Pia from Division 9 Home Inspection, who's a little tardy on getting back to us, wouldn't you say there, Frank, to get on the show? Tad, Just yeah. a tad tardy. Um, Matt is a great here. friend of mine personally. He's one of the finest home inspectors in the Valley, hands down, and a frequent guest on this show. Your personal realtor with Eric McKenna. And we're going to have uh, Matt, Matt on very soon. Matt, he had a role for a while. Like every fourth week he was here. But I he, think he just he doesn't is, like us. I don't know. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that isn't the case because he's my go-to guy and uh, you know my buyers love him. He does such a great job. So it's uh, it's really impressive that uh, the work that Matt does. And he's a good guest. People love when he's on. He answers all kinds of, he answers all kinds of questions. And, and he's been a big help to you too, Frank. Am I right? Right. Exactly. Okay. So... See if we can squeeze in this. My third tenant, what you should ask for from any realtor you're getting ready to hire to sell your house, and what I promise up front to my clients before I list their house is we talked about my commitment of privacy to them. We talked about my commitment of total honesty to them. The third tenant is communication, and it's real simple. I basically say I will always be accessible to you via call or text at 412-613-4466, day or night. Also through my email at sold at calleric.com. And of course, on my website, the sponsor of this here show, calleric.com. Lots of ways to reach me. I will always, you know, it'll always be my goal to respond to your calls, texts, or emails in a very prompt fashion. I pride myself in doing so, and I really mean that when I say a prompt fashion. You know, one of the pet peeves that I have as a realtor, and I'm sure many people that really take their job seriously in any field, in any field, probably have the same pet peeve. And I know Frank has this pet peeve as well, and that is often when we can't get in touch with people in the industry. We have vendors and clients, and we have brokers and so forth, where People are not as accessible as we'd like them to be. And sometimes it's selfish on our behalf. You know, we all want answers when we want them, you know. And I, I really i am kind of demanding. You know, I'm kind of demanding on my vendors. Matt Pia will tell you. Uh, but Matt and I started to work together, um, you know. And, uh, you know, when I said, hey, Matt, you know, I want to refer you very strongly to my buyers. But there's a couple of things I demand. Uh, and again, I didn't know Matt at the time. And I just said, listen, you know, I really am demanding on communication. So whether it's me or my buyer client that's reaching out to you, um, you know, we just need a response in a timely fashion. And I'm a little, probably a little harder on people than, than the average Joe, so to speak. And Matt tell you understood because I think, you know, it turns out Matt has the same philosophy that I do. And that is that you should always get back to your clients as an absolute priority. Now, again, we're all human. We have all have things going on in our lives. I shared with our listening audience earlier, my father-in-law, uh, God bless his soul, is uh, in the hospital right now. Uh, Nelson Cumpson, I'm sending you my love and my best for you. Um, so I'm experiencing that right now where I've got a family, you know, a, not an emergency, but a little crisis going on. So we all have, we all have our, our trials and tribulations. All of us do. And at the same time, I put priority on getting back with all my clients in the most timely fashion possible. And I'm a busy realtor, you know, and, and I'll tell you later why that's a good thing. You shouldn't look at that negatively. You want a busy realtor, but I'm a busy realtor and you throw in my kids and their activities and all that stuff, just like we all face, you know, we have to tie all that up in a nice bow, but I put a lot of priority. And I mean that I put a lot of priority on getting back with my clients as fast as possible. And, you know, I've had some seasoned agents tell me I spoil my clients a little bit because, you know, they're so used to getting an, you know, almost an instant response, whether it's Facebook messenger, whether it's texting, whether it's a phone call. Um, I won't waste their time. If I don't have the right information they're looking for and I need some time, I'll just text them back. Hey, I'm working on it. Give me some time to get the right information, that kind of stuff. But in the end, truly in the end, it really is all about getting back in a timely fashion. That is how people feel taken care of that is how people feel appreciated that is how people feel that you are putting their interests first before anyone else especially in a competitive circumstance and that is probably to me the very top the very top tier of what we will call broadly the concept of service would you not agree frank 
Yes, I mean, sir. I mean, effective communication mm-hmm. without a doubt. And we, we, Frank and I have talked about this in his business in the past as well. And sometimes, correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes that little extra communication, even when you don't have what the client wants at that moment, can go a long way to making sure the client feels like you are taking care of them. Would you yes. not agree? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So for me, the communication thing is big. I mean, there, there's, you know, I, I will get to my clients uh, whenever I possibly can. It will be, un, you know, I have clients that sometimes text me 10, 11 o'clock at night asking questions about their listing, our appointments for the next day. Maybe we're showing houses. I'm okay with that. Uh, it's it's rare that I'm sleeping before 10, but if I am, you know, the next the next morning, first thing in the morning, I will address the, the concept. But I do work a lot. I do encourage my my customers if they have questions or concerns, don't sit on them. You know, don't sit on them. Number one, you may forget about it by the next day, which that isn't good. Number two, it may be distressing enough to you not knowing the answer that I wouldn't want you to go through a whole, you know, a whole evening or a whole prolonged period of time with this pressing on your mind. I wouldn't want that for you. And that's why I tell my, my buyer clients and, of course, my seller clients, I am at your disposal without a doubt. I uh, I. And we're going to talk a little bit about more about communication on the other side of the break, the types of communication and how that's kind of changed over the years with technology. But again, I can't stress enough how important communication is in the real estate business. I demand it on my end from my vendors and my broker. Luckily, I have a phenomenal broker, phenomenal broker, the Hanlevich's. Um, that own Remax Advanced and uh, the the tier of uh, very seasoned and wonderful agents that are there um, are phenomenal for getting back with us in the support level and that's very important as a realtor. I can you know I can do a whole show on that as well probably not quite as interesting but ultimately uh, what the consumer doesn't see often is how important it is for a realtor to be with a brokerage who really supports them and provides provides all the services that I need to service my clients well. And communication is one thing I, I received from my broker in spades. So it's fantastic that uh, without question, I get that. So Frank, are we headed toward the news? Were you done with the first section of the show almost? Unbelievable. Well, One in a minute. So it, before uh, before we, we go to break, friends, uh, we're going to come back on the other side of the break. And we're going to talk more about communication, why it's so imperative in working with the realtor. And then we're going to talk at the end about how I need communication back from my clients and what I ask of my clients, because again, it is a two-way street. But I also want to remind everybody that this show is sponsored by my website, which is calleric.com. That's calleric.com. You can learn more about my realtor practice, my philosophies on real estate, and hopefully there'll be good information in there that will even pique your interest even further, and uh, maybe we can connect. I'd love to be your personal realtor. My direct line to me you can call or text me anytime. It's 412-613-4466. Again, that's 412-613-4466. Definitely, without a doubt, love to speak with you. I've had the pleasure and the honor of working with so many, uh, primarily in Beaver County. Naturally, we're Beaver County Radio. But so many new Beaver County friends I have made and clients. I am very humbled by that. I appreciate you found value in myself and this show. And on behalf of Frank, we give you our humble thanks. Okay, my friends, uh, this is 1230 WBVP in Chippewa and Beaver Falls and 1460 WMBA in Ambridge and Coriopolis. And right now coming up is Town Hall News. This hour from townhall.com. I'm Rich Thomason. Strict independence. That's what FBI Director nominee Christopher Wray is pledging if he takes the helm of the Bureau. Testifying today at his Senate confirmation hearing, Wray says the FBI must operate above the political fray. I will never allow the FBI's work to be driven by anything other than the facts, the law, and the impartial pursuit of justice, period. Full stop. Ray takes issue with the president's description of the Russia investigations as a witch hunt, and he says he has no reason to doubt that Russia interfered in last year's U.S. presidential election. 
Mississippi's Public Safety Commissioner says at least one criminal investigation is now underway into the theft of debris from the site of a military plane crash that left 16 people dead. We have a pretty large uh, area to cover. There are items that are going to be recovered by teams on the ground. Some of these may be unsafe. 16 people died in the crash of the Marine Corps KC-130 aircraft. There's no word yet on the cause. Janet Yellen says the Federal Reserve expects to keep hiking interest rates for the foreseeable future. She also says the central bank plans to start trimming its bond holdings this year. Both signaled encouraging signs about the U.S. economy. In her annual report to Congress, Yellen says strong job gains and rising household wealth should fuel economic growth. She blames a recent slowdown in inflation on temporary factors. Many analysts expect the Fed to hike rates one more time this year. Capitol Hill correspondent Wally Hines. On Wall Street, the Dow is up about 137 points. The Nasdaq, 65 points higher, and the S&P is better by 19. More on these stories at townhall.com. I'm Nick Soboleski, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a $300,000 group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I impartially shopped the highly rated term life insurance companies we represent and found Ray, who is 41 and takes medication to control his cholesterol, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $26 a month. That's almost twice the coverage for less than half of what he had paid. If SelectQuote hasn't shopped for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 1-800-566-2424. That's 1-800-566-2424. 1-800-566-2424. Or go to SelectQuote.com. We shop, you save. Get full details on the example policy at selectquote.com slash commercials. Your price can vary depending on your health, issuing company, and other factors. Not available in all states. An electric car is shunted aside, at least for now. An electric car maker deserted its plan to construct a $1 billion manufacturing plant in southern Nevada. In a move experts say could spell trouble for the company and the broader niche electric automobile industry. Faraday Futures Chief Financial Officer Stefan Krauss said the decision to scrap the plant was due to a shift in business strategy. The Gardena, California-based company said in a statement it'll look for an existing facility to produce its electric vehicles in California or Nevada. Keith Peters reporting. The European Union's chief Brexit negotiator says Britain must meet some tough conditions in divorce talks. Doesn't have long to do it before the two sides can start looking to a future relationship. Showing frustration with what Europeans consider British grandstanding and impatience with a lack of clear proposals, the EU's negotiator says Britain needs to make sufficient progress. News and analysis, townhall.com. One major credit card company urges small firms to say goodbye to greenbacks once and for all. Visa is looking to push more small businesses into updating their digital payment technology. It's offering up to $500,000 to 50 U.S.-based small business owners that are committed to going cashless. To participate in Visa's cashless challenge, small business restaurants, cafes, or food truck owners will need to describe what cashless means for them, their employees, and their customers. Bob Agnew reporting. A new poll finds a vast majority of Americans think people like them have too little influence in Washington and that lobbyists, rich people, and big business have too much power. The survey by the Associated Press NORC Center for Public Affairs Research also shows none of the three branches of government earns much confidence from the American people. More on these stories at townhall.com. Beaver County stations for news, sports, information, and entertainment. 1230 WBVP Beaver Falls and 1460 WMBA Ambridge.
And we're back, and welcome to our number two of Your Personal Realtor with Eric McKenna here on Beaver County Radio. I am your humble host, REMAX Advanced Realtor Eric McKenna, and I'm joined each week on Wednesday from 2 to 4 with the incomparable Sir Frank Sparks. How are you, Frank? I'm good. We're back for hour two, my friend. Time flies. Looks like it's nice out there today. It is nice. It I is nice. I can't tell. Somebody clean, closed those nice Lachina drapery and blind factory. Well, I was us. just going to say that <laughs> uh, we broadcast every week here in the luxurious Lachina drapery and blinds factory studio <laughs> of Beaver County Radio, 1230 WBBP and 1460 WMBA in the beautiful downtown of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. How about that? How nice about little that? intro, huh? Yeah, that is nice. I think I want paid for that intro. I do a pretty good job uh, on that. I don't know. Can't get paid that. on that one? No. Not good enough? No. Okay. I'm working on my game here, guys. I'm working no. on my game. No, in all sincerity, uh, just thrilled to be here. We were talking today about what I promise, unequivocally promise my home sellers, my home listeners, and what I believe to be should, are the tenants of what all, real, all realtors, all good realtors, which is most of us, I like to think, should absolutely promise a home seller when we're thinking about listing the house and you're bringing us on to provide the service of listing your house. So l- let me ask you this then. If I want to sell my house and I'm thinking about using you as my realtor to sell my house. Yes, Mr. Sparks. And I think my house is worth, we'll say, we'll just use it in a figure, 100000 and you think my house is worth 50000 and um, I'm very uh, adamant about the fact that I think my house is a hundred thousand. I want that out, and you're very adamant about the fact my house is only worth fifty thousand dollars. At that point, are you going to tell me that this is what it's worth? And you know, I won't be here. I can't represent you if you think you're going to get that out of it because it's not going to happen. Okay, very good question. Let's. Uh, I have to dissect what you said though. Let's make sure I understand this now. We come to do a listing appointment. You believe your house is worth worth $100,000. I have the comps that I prepared, and it kind of indicates to me that we, we need to – the market value of your house is, in my best estimate, my professional estimate as a realtor, is around $50,000. Sure. You cool with that? That, yeah. that kind of that, – that's the question. Okay. Right. Now, that's that's a big difference. Big difference between 50000 to 100000 or – Four hundred and fifty thousand to five hundred thousand. Would you not agree? Oh. Same amount of money, but a smaller percentage of the price. Correct. You are actually double what I believe your house is worth. Right at the hundred thousand to fifty thousand dollar comparison. Right. Okay. Let's not get real harsh right away about me saying, "Hey, I'm walking. I'm quote unquote walking away from this relationship and this listing, or I'm declining the listing." A lot of things, a lot of gymnastics have to happen first before we get there, and it's all based on service. <clears throat> the first thing I would say is, Mr. Sparks, I respect that. You know, I, I've done a lot of work with my own house, and I have a figure in my head of what I would need to part with this thing based upon a lot of circumstances, the market, where it's at, what I've put into it, the whole bit. Can you share with me a little bit why you feel, you know, what are the components that help you come to that number of $100,000? Well, my neighbor's house just sold for 100000 <laughs> no, 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 no. That's good. Keep it coming because that's right, what that's I hear. That's what I mean. You know, that's my neighbor's house sold for hundred thousand. Certainly, I've done this to it. I've done that to it. Right. This is what I paid when I bought it, right. and I feel this is what it's worth. Sure, sure, and that's all good. And again, again, it, I think it's any realtor's responsibility to really dissect how the client came to that number, and then try to walk it back a little bit by by explaining that you know it isn't a dollar for dollar comparison. If it's the neighbor's house sold for this amount of money, then we need to really examine your house compared to the neighbor. There's a lot of back and forth that I would go to before I would quote unquote walk away. Now, have the bigger question is have in my career, have I walked away from a home seller when we couldn't get close enough on a list price? Mm -hmm. Yes, I have. I've walked away from one, one and I I don't take any glee in saying this. Uh, they went with another brokerage and another agent. It was on the market three days after I turned it down. It was on the market three days later at the price that the seller wanted me to list for. When the house sold, the house sold to the dollar of what I what told said. the seller the market value was. I don't want a pat on the back. I, it's not about that. 
what I'm telling you is we don't want to waste your time. No good realtor would ever want to walk into a home seller and waste their time. If you're if you're out of bounds, if we really feel you're you're significantly out of out of bounds is a bad phrase. If we significant if we feel you are significantly higher than the market value, significantly, then and we can't walk you back. We can't get you to see why that is based upon facts. Then you know, it's a tough spot. And at that time in that particular circumstance, I had to walk away from that. I you know, it's 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 in a small, selfish way, it is my reputation. I don't want my shingle, you know, I don't want my name hanging on my rider sign with my name, callwear.com. Don't want that hanging on side of a, of a house that cannot sell, especially when it's not selling because of anything that I've done. It's just simply, uh, it's just, you know, simply outpriced. Now, let's put a big caveat on all this. Have I listed houses that I thought were too aggressively priced? Yes, but the seller knew that. We went in and they felt, hey, you know, Eric, we really believe that this house should be, you know, um, it, let's just say it was 300000 I came in. I said, look, we're at 300000 We're in a great spot. If you want to go three hundred five, maybe three ten, and test the market a little bit, because I think you're still in the appraisal area there, you're fine. And it's in a good seller's market. Maybe we'll go there. Maybe we'll try that. But when it gets up to 319 324 or 329 I get uncomfortable and it's not going to help that seller by me taking the listing and just plopping it out there and hoping for the best. Okay. What I often do with some of my sellers uh, and mo- most of my sellers, especially those that, that really are doing their homework. And I appreciate that because I really do. I appreciate engaged clients. I absolutely do. But what I typically do is I say, okay, you know what? I feel we should be around 300 based upon all the information I have, the facts that I have to bring to you. You feel we should be at 320, okay? I tried to get you to meet me halfway at 310, but you're pretty adamant about the 320. There's no right or wrong. In all honesty, for a listing price, there's no right or wrong. And I've been surprised before. You know, there's no nothing is cut in stone in this business. But here's the thing. Let's list it at 320. Let's put a plan together that if we're not getting the feedback from the agents that do come or we're not getting enough quite frankly, enough visits or showings. Let's put a plan together that after two weeks, let's talk again. Maybe we'll bring it down a couple thousand. Let's have an incremental price. You you know where I'm going with this, right? Mm -hmm. Let's put a plan together that we don't waste your time. Because it's more, believe it or not, Frank, it's more of a waste of the client's time than it is my time. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Because I'm out doing my thing. I'm in the game constantly. I'm in the business. I don't want to waste the client's time. Now, again, this is... Kind of putting the cart before the horse. We haven't talked about what the goals are, and the client may need to sell it at a certain period of time. They may be moving, you know, lots of things involved. But let's just say, for sake of argument, this customer wants to list at 320 and they have time to not sit on it, but they have time to be patient and they feel it's going to, you know, bring it. Now, would I list that at 320? I would. If I had a plan to bring it down more reasonable if it doesn't sell, would I list it at 350? $50,000 high? I would probably walk from that. Now, to show you how great people are and how I honestly believe, I always take the positive in everything because I believe it to be true. These circumstances don't happen. People are reasonable. They understand. And while sometimes they'll search the web, and I'm not a big fan of Zillow, period, but I'm not a big fan of Zillow's Zestimate. Have you seen that? Where they they say they run their own comparables, and they'll tell you how much they feel your house is worth. I've seen those numbers so distorted. I, you know, I I want to remain professional, but I just don't put. I'm very uncomfortable with his estimates, and I don't put a lot of stock in it. But let's just say that the clients do 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 their homework. I get all of that. People are are generally reasonable, and I feel that if I say, Mister Mister Client, let we're going to list at your price. I will do that. I'm not real comfortable with it that it's the right price, but I've been surprised before. But let's put a plan in place that we work together. That if we're not getting the activity or the feedback that we need to see, because agents will tell us if we're too high, believe me, agents will feed, they'll, they'll tell you, then we'll slowly walk it to a point. And hey, I've been wrong before. You know, maybe we do sell it for seven, eight, ten thousand dollars higher than than you know our market price. That's a win. But that's how I would handle that. I have walked away from one listing. I don't think it'll ever happen again. 
And I think that's because I can provide a very good case to a home seller as to why they're overpriced. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does. Okay. So now I will tell you this about home pricing. It is an inexact science. I can provide you the very best comps imaginable that show that your house, that you could support an idea and the market quote unquote could support an idea of $325,000. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. We could market the heck out of this property, and we can do all the things that we do to really get it out there. And at the last minute, we go to list. All of a sudden, now, over the you know first week, second, third, or during the first month, a bunch of other properties now get listed, <laughs> or also close around you that skew that price. Do you see? The market changes daily. So when I first got into the business, there was a very wise agent that had this philosophy, and his philosophy was. Eric, if a house is priced appropriately, it shouldn't be on the market more than a month. And I've repeated that phrase to other agents over the years, you know, that this is what I was told. And I found that it's just not true. It's just not true. There's too many variables involved with each individual listing. Sometimes I have to laugh because this happens quite often, Frank. We talked about this where, you know, you see an agent uh, that'll brag, I've had 15 listings in the past month. And out of those 15 listings, 12 of them have sold within two or three days from the time I listed. Hmm. And they'll brag about that. They will use that in marketing. They will say, I'm so in tune with the market and I know exactly what I'm doing that uh, out of my 15 current listings, you know, 12 have sold within the first three days they were put on the market. It sounds pretty good, right? I mean, hey, it sounds pretty good. What do you think's happening there, Frank? What do you think's happening? I think there might be a slight chance that maybe, just maybe, they're not suggesting the right listing price to their sellers. Do you think there might be some money left on the yeah, table? Yeah, that's, I mean, realistically, if you have something to sell, in my opinion, and somebody, and I, I mean, not only in houses, but if somebody jumps on it, boom, like that, then something's not right. My circumstance in real estate, my experience has been, generally speaking, I'm all for competitive circumstances. I'm all for, how do I say this? I'm all for competition between realtors. I think it's healthy. I think it's good to interview realtors. I, you know, I, I'd like to get every interview I go on. I'd like to be chosen by everybody to be their realtor. It's not reality. You, know, you want a good fit. And I hope if you don't choose me, if you choose somebody that you really connect with, that's awesome. I support that 100%. What I find to be sometimes a little disingenuous is, you know, things appear to be one thing when in reality they're not. And if you're going to, you know, if you're going to use as a moniker that you sell houses quickly all the time, or you'll do this for a client, or you'll do this for a client, you really need as a consumer to really look into there and say, okay, well, you know, if the houses are selling in two or three days, how do I know that that house actually sold for market value? How do I know if it was priced maybe another ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars higher? It might have taken thirty days, sometimes even two months, maybe. But how come? How am I sure that there was no money left on the table? Now, granted, granted, each seller is different. That agent might might have gotten a recommendation, Frank, from that particular seller, saying, "Hey, I need to sell this thing quick, like in a week or two. Price it accordingly." I'm sure that happens. I don't think that happens very often, if you follow what I'm saying, but I think that happens. So there are circumstances where a seller may want a quick sale. My goal is to price it effectively, work with the seller, make sure they're comfortable, make sure I'm comfortable because I'm representing them, but I don't want to leave money on the table unless the seller has an excruciating circumstance that requires that. Does that make any sense? Yes, it does. So the house should be sold for market value. That's very important to me. I'm not worried about advertising that I'm the realtor that sold 10 out of my 15 listings the first three days they were listed. I have no interest in that. I don't think that's hard to do. I'm going to be honest with you. Price, your, price the property at 80% of what it's worth, you know, 85% of what it's worth, not hard to do. It'll be gone. So, again, you know, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. You want an effective sale, but, but again, my job is to get you, Mr. Seller, Mr. Home Lister, Market value and maybe then some, a little more, or at least market value, not under market value. And again, that's my job. If you tell me to do something different, then that's another story, and we will uh, we'll discuss that as well. 
Got a little bit off tangent there. We were talking about communication, but Frank, that was a great question. And I know Frank had that question on, on the prior uh, part of the show when I was talking about listings. But I, as a rule of thumb, I don't turn down business. I had one circumstance where I could not walk a client down to quote unquote reality about their cost of their home. And I did have to walk away from that. But uh, I get no satisfaction out of that. I don't, I don't get very much satisfaction out of being right at anyone else's expense. Because in that instance, no one wins. So, again, being right's one thing, but being right and having the client feel like, wow, my realtor did a great job, that's what it's about. Being right and not having the client, <laughs> it's pretty hollow. So, that's about as best as I can put it. We will talk about the communication tenant that I have and the types of communications that are being used right now in real estate and what I ask of my clients on the other side of the break. You're listening to Your Personal Realtor with Eric McKenna on WBBP and WMBA. We'll be right back. Hello, friends. This is Remaxed Advanced Realtor Eric McKenna with CallEric.com and host of Your Personal Realtor on 1230 WBBP and 1460 WMBA. I really hope you are enjoying today's show. Friends, did you know that I can be your personal realtor? That's right. If you're looking to list your home or buy a new home, call or text me today at 412-613-4466. That's 412-613-4466. Or send me an email at sold at calleric.com. That's sold at calleric.com. I just love it when listeners become clients. So why not contact me today? And let me put my social media advertising to work for you. Together, we can reach your real estate goals. This is your personal realtor, Eric McKenna, with Remaxed Advanced Realtors and calleric.com. Lisa Lachina just sent me a note. She is all excited about summer because she's got a rebate program. She actually sent me a picture of a rebate check. Of course, I can't cash it, but somebody did for five hundred dollars rebates up to five hundred dollars right now on your purchases at lachina drapery and blind factory so it goes like this you know the name lachina they've been in pittsburgh for 65 years doing what they do best custom window treatments and blinds lisa and the design team will come to you with a no obligation shop and home appointment and all you have to do is call 412-665-4900 that's 412 412- 665 4900. Take advantage of this rebate opportunity now because it won't last by calling Lachina Drapery and Blind Factory. 412 665 4900. Now is the time to do what you've wanted to do and beautify your home from the inside out. Log on to LachinaDrapery.com. More exciting than Pirates Baseball is getting a great deal on local merchandise or making extra money by selling the stuff you don't need anymore. This is Diane Brocious, host of Yankee Trader. Fantastic transactions are as close as your radio. Beaver County's original live buy, sell, and trade radio show. Weekdays from 1 until 2. Call 724-843-1888 or 724-774-1888 to join Yankee Trader right here on 1230 WBVP and 1460 WMBA. Hi, this is Larry Ferrario, host of Natural Health. Join me every Wednesday afternoon at 4 o'clock for an hour of the most current information on getting and staying well in a non-toxic, non-invasive, sustainable way. We'll give you details on the best organic foods, vitamin and herbal supplements, fitness activities, and a verse or two from God's Word that will help strengthen your body, mind, and spirit. That's Natural Health with me, Larry Ferrario, Wednesdays from 4 to 5 p.m. right here on 1230 WBVP and 1460 WMBA. Welcome back to your personal realtor with Remax Advanced Realtor Eric McKenna. That would be me, your humble host. 
here every Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. on Beaver County Radio, 1230 WBVP and 1460 WMBA. I am delighted to be here with you all, and thank you for giving us a little part of your afternoon. I'm joined every, that's well, almost every week by Mr. Beaver County Radio himself, Sir Frank Sparks behind the big board. Frank, we're heading into the last half of the show, buddy. Time flies. It does it? fly. It does. It does. You, well, you, you hit me with that good question last time. Would I turn down a listing? Man, what realtor would want to hear that? Have you ever, while we're on that real yeah. quick before we move on, mm-hmm. have you ever actually said to somebody, okay, well, all right, so, you, I mean, you get closer, obviously. Like, say, maybe you say it's worth 50 and I'm agreeable to say 60 Okay. Okay, 65. Okay. Have you ever said, okay, well, we'll go with that 65, but if it goes for less, I want you to understand that's a possibility that might happen, mm-hmm. and I don't want you to get mad at me because mm-hmm. that's what it went for. Yeah, I, I think I'm pretty um, – how do I say this? I would never want a client to be upset with me. Okay. But, you know, we're all humans, and, you know, part of a, a long-term relationship is, you know, hey <laughs> – I would get mad at me too. <laughs> you know, I'm disappointed in myself quite a bit sometimes, not reaching my goals. The point is, ultimately, if you're upset with me because your house didn't sell for what you wanted it to be, I can live with that. I can live with that. In the end, was the transaction fair? Did everybody, you know, work through the transaction? Did you? Was it a clean transaction? Did you get paid? Did you get to your goal? Sure, we'd like to have a little more money, but again. The seller is the client, and the client is the boss. I work for the client. So he, you, you, sir, you, Mr. Sparks, you wouldn't sell that house ultimately if you didn't want to do it. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So your question is a good one, but um, I've been blessed in regards to that. I, like I said, I walked away from one because it just didn't make any sense. But everyone else has been phenomenal, and I'm not there to rain on their parade at all. I mean, you know, and I would love to. Hey, when someone says to me, "I want my house. I want to sell my house for three hundred thousand. I'm adamant. I think it's worth three hundred thousand, and I'm at two sixty. You know, I wish I could sell that house for three hundred. There's no question. You know, my the more the better. But again, there's an appraisal issue. There's a marketing issue. Are all those things going to come together for you? And the comparables, the quote unquote comps, as we like to say in this business, are the facts. And while it's an inexact science, again, an inexact science, it's enough to get us to the point where we can do good business and ultimately provide value and service to our listing clients and make sure their house is priced appropriately so we can get it sold for them. But there's so many factors involved, it's hard to really give you an exact thumbs up or thumbs down. We're talking about the three tenants. Well, there's more than three, but the first three tenants of what I promised to my listing clients, we talked about privacy, honesty, and we talked a little bit about communication and the different ways to get a hold of me. Uh, I had to be brought into the texting arena, kicking and screaming. You know, I'm 51 years old, so I've been a pretty much a technology buff for a lot of my life. I'm the one that probably had the, the Windows computer on my desk in 1988. And I, I, you know, I was always in that. I had an internet business for 15 years. I, I mean, I'm pretty tech savvy for a 51 year old guy. I am. One thing I didn't like on the personal end, though, is I never really saw the value of texting. You know, back in 2008, 9, 10, when it started to become popular, and uh, I really didn't need it in the guitar business. And then, uh, you know, I started getting into real estate, and becoming a realtor, and realizing, oh, this is a really, I guess, I guess, this is a way people want to communicate. And now I'm 180 degrees. I'm there. I'm so there. It's a time saver if it's done right. You know, it eliminates, you know, sadly to a certain degree, but it does kind of eliminate voice communication. Um, But it definitely is cleaner and it's quicker and it's more streamlined. And you can get the facts back and forth between two individuals or multiple individuals very quickly. And I've, I've, you know, I've been brought kicking and screaming into the texting age, but I do find it to be a huge benefit right now. Would you not agree, Frank? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, we've learned a lot here at the station just from the things that you've learned yourself about social media and sure. advancing. Yeah, texting is a huge component of what we do for communication. But the overall um, concept I want to leave with our audience today is that when I mention communication, I will tailor my communication methods and mannerisms to my client. You know, I've got clients that are 70, 75 years, 80 years old who have never texted in their life. Most of them have emailed though, surprisingly enough, they're savvy enough. 
But I have a client who's over 80, and you know what, Frank? I have to call this gentleman for everything. That's the way it has to be. That's what I'm willing to do. So, again, I will adapt my method of communication toward my client. Whatever the client wants and the frequency or the infrequency that they want to hear from me is exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, I encourage as much communication as they're comfortable with, but ultimately the method in which they want to is fine. And I will tell you a, a big one which gets unnoticed often is how Facebook Messenger, the actual messaging app within Facebook has become so, so important now and so, I guess, proliferated in, in society. It's just as accepted as, a, as texting on a, a phone line. So communication, a very big thing. Uh, we have some time here on this last segment of the show. We're going to get into the, the fourth concept that I absolutely, and, I, and this is a big one for me, that I commit to my home seller when they hire me on as being their personal realtor and to list their home, and that is marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. Simply put, this is how I explain it to my potential home seller. Along with the strength of Remax industry leading marketing, which we do have that, we sure do at Remax, your home will be marketed on the MLS, which is the multi list, as you know, we all know here in Western PA. And they'll be marketed through the MLS to all the realtors, as well as all the top tier public websites, including Remax and Zillow and Realtor.com, Trulia, and many, many, many others. There's, a, there's just a plethora of them out there. In addition, with your permission, Mr. Home Seller, I'll create, publish, and pay for. I'll repeat that. I will create, I will publish, and I, your personal realtor, Eric McKenna, will pay for advertisements marketing your home on Facebook and Instagram. I will provide any and all for sale signs on your property at my cost, of course. And with your permission, I may choose to mention your home, on my real estate talk show, Your Personal Realtor with Eric McKenna, airing every Wednesday from 2 to 4 on WBVP and WMBA. We'll get back to this in a second, but right now we have a phone call. Is that right? Yep. Hi, you're on with Eric McKenna. Hey, Eric. How are I you? I've got a question for you, sir. It's just out of curiosity because sure. I don't know anything about uh, you know real estate agents or something, but you might want to educate uh, everybody else listening out there sure. that's unaware of what you guys do exactly. But... I remember you were with uh, Howard Hanna before, and now you're with Remax. Can you explain, you know, how real estate agents decide what agency they're going to align with? Sure. I was just curious because sure. I don't know. Sure, I'd be glad to do that. Not a worry at all. Not a worry. Thank you very much for that. Um, the way real estate works in Pennsylvania, obviously, as in most states, uh, an individual cannot get a real estate license and then just prop themselves up in the business. I just can't walk down the street, you know, hang my little shingle, Eric McKenna, real estate agent, mm -hmm. and start selling. We must align ourselves with a licensed brokerage. So in Western Pennsylvania, there is a lot of phenomenal brokerages. Howard Hanna is certainly one of them. Um, it's a family-owned company. Uh, it, it's, it's structured a lot different than some of the more independents are. Um, Howard Hanna, Caldwell Banker, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, some of the heavy, some of the big ones. Um, their structure is all kind of similar. Hannah probably being the most parochial. I mean, they're just so popular and so well-known in, in Western PA. Um, I made a decision to become a Howard Hanna agent uh, when I got my license, quite frankly, because of the relationship that I had with a, with a couple Howard Hanna agents. And I just kind of went in that direction. They were they were very good in regards of training, too, which I really loved about that. Hannah's training is second to none for new agents, hands down. And I really enjoyed it. They treated me fabulously. And the reason I ended up leaving Howard Hanna, quite frankly, was a business decision. I had spent many years running my own internet business, and I really was into marketing and branding myself. And it was the marketing of, of what I do, of your personal realtor and calleric.com. All that is a big component of how I grow. I want to grow my business. At Hannah, I didn't have the opportunity to really brand myself in the way I wanted to. And so I knew after a period of time and I got my sea legs and I was, I was ready to go, I wanted to find a, a different style of brokerage that would let me be more of an entrepreneur, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. It was just a better fit for me. That's all. Um, there, and it's funny because people talk about you know Remax and Keller Williams and, and the big ones. 
But the the irony of the most of the business that's written, if you look at it as a pie chart, the bulk of the business is written by the smaller brokers. So there's a lot of uh, real estate transactions going on with brokers that you and I probably never even heard of before. So for me, okay. it was for me, it was personal preference. Um, you know, when someone leaves an organization and goes to another, I don't know why we do this in society. But we, it, people want to attach drama to it all the time. Oh, you know, one's bad and one's good. It wasn't like that at all with me. You know, I left a lot of friends and, and I didn't leave them. I just don't work in, with their brokerage anymore. But fantastic experience at Howard Hanna. Trained me very, very well. And I wouldn't be, I don't feel the real I am today had I not been a Hanna agent for a long time. So it's a, it's a personal decision. It is the decision of the agent. And again, the broker has to want to take you on as well. You know, you don't have a right mm-hmm. to work at a brokerage. You got to interview and you got to make sure that brokerage is comfortable with you. But I just saw an opportunity to really run my practice in an entrepreneurial way. This, this radio show is a great example of that. You know, I, I advertise on multiple radio stations. Um, I, I do a lot of internet advertisement. So I'm branding myself as your personal realtor. That's part of what I do. Remax and their structure enables me to do that. And I guess that's primarily why I made a decision to go to become a Remax agent. That so then they would choose to do business with you then no matter where you were then. Is that, am I reading that correctly or, or not? When you say they, I'm, I'm not, not really understanding who, who would do business with me. I mean, the, the clients. Oh, okay. Thank you. No. I, yeah. I think that's what he meant. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. So I'm like right. it, it doesn't matter if you're at Remax or mm-hmm. if you're, say you're somewhere else at another broker. Sure. If they, they're choosing to do business with you. No not question. Necessarily your broker. No question. And I, I think, I think that's a, yeah, that's absolutely a big part of it. It's, I want you to do business with me and, and knowing that I've got a great company behind me. Okay. That's it. Another right. call? Another one. Okay. Hi, you're on with Eric McKenna. Hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, yeah, my name's Andre. I got a phone call earlier about winning pirate tickets. Oh, okay. You know what? Uh, you have to call 724-846-4100 and make arrangements with Sheila to get them. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, have a great day. Bye. I don't have any pirate tickets to give her. Well, <laughs> she actually won from everything that we did uh at uh the car cruise beaver okay. county boom okay cool and then we've been registering throughout the last couple of weeks very cool very yeah. cool so she won some pirate tickets that was a very good, good question that was asked me and it, it took us off our, our train of thought here but that's fine because that's what i encourage uh to just to recap that frank i want to brand myself that's what i want to do I, you know this whole i'm in a self-promotion game that's what being a realtor is we're not paid a salary we're not paid a stipend it's a pure commission game. I want to build a realtor practice, and that's what I've been setting out to do all these years. And my decision to move from Howard Hanna to Remax was certainly was a, there was a financial component there, but there also was an ability for me to market myself and make my my own little business. If that makes sense, Hanna is more of a structured environment where you certainly can market yourself. I just didn't feel the same freedom. If that makes any sense as a realtor. Mm-hmm. That's all. It was um, it, it was a tough decision. I, I think. In, in, I made that decision, friends, when I was probably, how many weeks? Probably around 14 weeks into my show here. And um, we had the announcement that I moved over to Remax. And it was tough because, you know, I, w- none of us like change. Right. You know, and everybody says, oh, I love change. Well, you know, the human nature, we really don't like change. It's been proven time and time again scientifically. But my point was, it was tough because it's always tough to change organizations and you have friends there and so forth. And you're not going to see them as frequently. Now, that's a little different with a brokerage as opposed to if you're working a nine to five job somewhere in an office because you're with these people every day. A brokerage is kind of like a lot of ships passing in the night. Do you know what I mean? There's an administrative staff of a couple people there, wonderful people there. But all the agents are coming and going. So it isn't like we're there kind of hanging out all day, if it makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So it's a little easier for on us because we're going to run into these same realtors all the time anyways. I've done multiple deals uh, since I've gone to Remax with How- Howard Hanna agents on the other end. So it's been great. But um, we, make our dis- own dis- we make our own decision where we want to, what brokers we want to be associated with. And if that brokerage wants us, then... We get the opportunity. Okay, just to finish, because I know I've asked you this question before. Sure. So I'll finish because it's probably going to be a question somebody has for you. Sure. So when you did make that decision to switch over, you currently had some clients that were Howard Hanna, 
and then you're going to Remax. Yes. What happens to those clients? Do they have to stay with Howard Hanna, or mm-hmm. do they move on with you? Okay. The contract. Uh, let's let's back up. It's it's an awesome question, and I'm going to answer it in an okay. awesome way. Okay. Because it's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. This whole show is awesome. There you go. <laughs> okay. When the only contracts that I have with clients, the only and I'm repeat myself this is very very important. Very important. The only contracts that your personal realtor, Eric McKenna, me, that I engage in with clients is when I'm listing a home. That contract is technically not even with me. It is with Remax and the home seller. I am the designated agent by Remax, the broker, to facilitate the agreement. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. A lot of realtors... And again, it's it's professional, it's legal, it's ethical. They use what's known as a buyer agency agreement. You familiar with that, Frank? So if you are looking for a home and you want to use Sally as your realtor, Sally may ask you to sign a buyer agency agreement. And there's a lot of things in that buyer agency agreement. And I'm, we're not going not to get into them all today. But it's basically committing that they're going to do certain things for you, the client. But in turn... In turn, Sally's asking you to be loyal to her for a year, maybe six months. I don't think any longer than a year, though. I don't use them. I refuse to use them. I don't. I want to work with someone out of, I want to work at their pleasure. I want to work with them because they want to work with me. And if at any point in time they are not comfortable with me, you know, going to sting i guess cause it's never happened to me but if i get quote unquote released or fired by a client it's going to sting but i want my client to always know that if it's not working out between us you're not being held to me you're not being captive to me be over a piece of paper i want you to work with someone great and someone you like and if for some reason we're not hitting it off you as a consumer deserve the right to go to where you want to go i refuse to make my buyer client sign a contract i will also tell you this When I took this stance, when I first got into the business, when I took it, I had seasoned agents tell me, that's the worst thing you can do. Some of these buyers are going to walk away from you, and they're going to do this, they're going to do that, and you're not going to get paid, and all this, like, you know, potential strife, and it's these, all these what ifs, what if they walk, and what if you go through and do all this work for them, and the last minute they pull out, and they go with another agent, and you lose all this time, and all those things can happen. We can what if ourselves to death. I mean, there's no question about it. But I have not found anything of the sort in any buyer I've ever worked with. I've never been fired. I have been taken to the, 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 the opposite's happened. I've made great friends. I have been taken care of. I have just had the most wonderful experience. And I believe that when you start off a relationship with a client, especially a buyer client, someone who's getting ready to buy their house, and they understand that you're not asking for an obligation outside of a personal handshake and really honest communication. If that's all you're asking for them and they like you and they're comfortable with you, they're not going to go. They're not going to leave you. They're going to stick with you all the way through. Why would they leave? So to answer your question, Frank, I won't use that. Now, when I left Howard, when I left Howard Hanna, this is how it works. My buyers, because I didn't have buyer agency agreements, we were just trying to find houses. They came right along with me. Okay. Okay. Because they weren't under contract with me, anyways. Or how? Or 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 Howard Hanna. My list. My listing agreements. Um. I had. I had some homes under contract. Some of them were getting ready to close. I would not abandon abandon any of my my clients at all. I went in and asked, "Hey, you know, I'm getting ready to leave. I know it's awkward. You know, number one." I have really deep personal relationships with my customers. I really, you know, they're my, they're my friends mm-hmm. and I would like to take them with me. If you release them and I can you know, go to go to Remax and list them and I can retain them. Hannah was willing to do that with a couple and Hannah was not willing to do that with a couple. So I, you know, I wasn't able to retain them all, but I was very appreciative of what they were willing to let me you know, go. I did stay in contact with those customers. I did stay in contact with the agent at Hannah that they put on the, you know, that they assigned to my listing. And I was there all the way through to closing for those clients that I did quote unquote lose through the transition. Okay. I think Howard Hanna treated me, treated me fairly. I think the management was fine. Um, it, it ended amicably. 
and uh, I still have a lot of friends there. They're a great company, and like I said, I was I was blessed to be a HANA trained agent. And I tell people that they ask me about my history of, re- of being a realtor and how I got in the business and all that stuff. I am a HANA trained agent, and I say that with pride. So time's flying, buddy. Yeah, time's flying. We didn't even get through our whole promise list. We'll probably have to catch most of it next week. But you're listening to your personal realtor with Eric McKenna here on Beaver County Radio. Thank you so much for making us a part of your Wednesday. Really appreciate that. And I promise, I promise, we'll be right back. Lisa Lachina just sent me a note. She is all excited about summer because she's got a rebate program. She actually sent me a picture of a rebate check. Of course, I can't cash it, but somebody did for five hundred dollars rebates up to five hundred dollars right now on your purchases at lachina drapery and blind factory so it goes like this you know the name lachina they've been in pittsburgh for 65 years doing what they do best custom window treatments and blinds lisa and the design team will come to you with a no obligation shop and home appointment and all you have to do is call 412-665-4900 that's 412 412- 665-4900. Take advantage of this rebate opportunity now because it won't last by calling Lachina Drapery and Blind Factory. 412-665-4900. Now is the time to do what you've wanted to do and beautify your home from the inside out. Log on to LachinaDrapery.com. You don't have to have had an accident, suffered a sports injury, or undergone surgery to take advantage of the benefits of physical therapy from Dale Reckless at MRS Physical Therapy. At a recent live broadcast at MRS Physical Therapy in Bridgewater, Dale Reckless talked about treatment for the common foot pain condition, plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis is a pretty common thing, um, and I, I tell my patients, don't wait to come and get some treatment for it. Just, the longer you wait, the more chronic it comes down. We'll still fix it, but it'll just take longer. If you come to see me when you're first getting the symptoms, then I can take care of it a lot quicker. Um, what I do with plantar fasciitis is we give some stretches to do. I do a lot of hands-on exercise, and then I also do an evaluation of how they walk and how they stand. I need the hands-on work that I do to help cure the plantar fasciitis. If you need physical therapy for any reason, Choose the place that your friends and neighbors do. MRS Physical Therapy in Bridgewater and Cranberry Physical Therapy in Cranberry. Visit MRSPhysicalTherapy.com. For the need-to-know info on Beaver County Entertainment, join Scott Tatey, entertainment editor for the Beaver County Times, and Frank Sparks every Thursday from 1130 to noon for the new Notes on Entertainment show. Brought to you by Wooly Boys in New Brighton, Notes on Entertainment is your source for the latest on local talent in the Beaver County area. So join Scott Tatey and Frank Sparks every Thursday from 1130 to noon as they discuss the next big acts coming to your area on WBVP and WMBA. Who's this week's pick of the litter? Listen to WBVP and WNBA every Monday and Friday from 9 a.m. till 12 noon for the Beaver County Humane Society's pick of the litter. We'll be highlighting two lucky resident animals from the shelter who need a loving home. Plus, we'll be featuring pictures and information about the animals on our website each week. It's WBVP and WNBA's pick of the litter each Monday and Friday from 9 a.m. to noon. Brought to you each week by the 19th Hole in Chippewa, Dr. Allison's Cavuzzo in Freedom, Albert's Heating and Air Conditioning in Conway, Vibrant Images in Bridgewater, Canine Kingdom in Vanport, Attorney Michael W. Nally in Alquippa, Beaver Agway, Laura's Loving Pet Sitting and Walking Services Incorporated in Beaver, and Beaver County Radio, 1230 WBVP and 1460 WMBA. back welcome back to the final segment of your personal realtor with eric mckenna i am 
Yes, indeed. I am your humble host, Eric McKenna, a realtor with Remax Advanced Realtors out of Swickley and Robinson Township. We are here every Wednesday with, by the grace of God, we are here every Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. on Beaver County Radio. As always, I'm joined by Sir Frank Sparks, Mr. Beaver County Radio himself, who my adopted co-host and producer and jack of all trades keeps the show flowing and uh you know keeps uh keeps the wolves at bay for me you just so don't to speak. learn to board <laughs> no i don't <laughs> i know you i caught on no i don't no i don't okay friends to recap the last three weeks have been really good here on this show uh we have talked about the following we've talked about why i don't do dual agency meaning i don't represent both a buyer and a seller in a transaction why i don't believe in it and you shouldn't believe in it either don't do it. Don't agree to it. It's legal. It, I guess it can be done ethically. Of course, I just don't believe it. Don't want to do it. Don't feel it's the best thing for a consumer. Last week, we spoke about the promises that I make to my buyer clients. When you come to me and say, hey, help me find a home. Would you be our realtor all the way to closing and beyond? Yes, I will be your personal realtor. And then here, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, this is what I'm willing to do for you. These are the tenants that I promise my buyer clients. Today, we expanded that a bit and we started to talk. We started to talk about my commitments that I make to my home sellers when they come to me and say, hey, Eric, we'd like you to sell our house. These are the things that I commit to my home sellers. Uh, I, the first was privacy, extremely important, obviously. I keep everything in the fiduciary relationship private. That's what fiduciary means, you know, Frank. Honesty, communication, and we got to, we're getting ready to get into marketing. And uh, we answered a call that took us into some questions about brokerages. Um, fantastic call. And I was glad I was able to talk about that, too. And people, I was asked, you know, well, what's the process when you are a realtor or a real estate agent and you go from broker A to broker B? Why do you do that? Why do uh, agents, quote, unquote, move? I don't think any of us jump around. At least I don't know of any agents that do that. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to the move. So you wouldn't want to do it on a daily basis. And I certainly have no intentions on going anywhere. I had a great start of my career at Hannah. I'm a Hannah-trained agent. I say that proudly. And I could not be happier with my broker, uh, Mark Hanlovich, at REMAX Advanced Realtors and the opportunity given to me. And I, I'm, I'm home. I feel like I'm home. So uh, I, I am not on the move anywhere. That's for darn sure. But we talked a little bit about that because we wanted to make sure – that we provide information to the public the best we possibly can because we are demystifying real estate here. That's the purpose of this show. Uh, friends, before I get into the final question, which we always do, we talk a little baseball before we uh, sign off here. I want to let you know I can be your personal realtor. You can call, text me, 412-613-4466. Again, 412-613-4466. Call or text me. Visit my website at calleric.com. Again, if you're thinking of buying or selling your home here in Beaver County, regardless of the circumstances, whether it's an estate sale, whether you're, it's your first time home buyer, you're upgrading, you're downgrading, whatever you need. If you, if you just want questions answered on what it would be if we do this next year, reach out to me. I love to connect with you. Love, love to connect with you. Again, your personal realtor, Eric McKenna, 412-613-4466, 412-613-4466. Call or text me or email me at sold at calleric.com or visit my website. You got it, calleric.com. As we always do, I'm talking to probably one of the most knowledgeable baseball people in my life, uh, Sir Frank Sparks. And uh, Frank, you know, on the Pirates here, we're coming down to the crunch time. They've got to make a decision. Are they going to go go for it here and try to win this division because they're not getting a wild card or are we going to, you know, maybe sell some of these pieces we have and try to build a super team over the next three or four years. Status quo. <sighs> what do you mean? Not buyers, not sellers. They might add like a cheap piece somewhere, but I think other than that, they're going to kind of stay status quo. And I think they have a chance to be honest with you. My only thing with the pirates is, that Cervelli's catching again, and oh. Elias Diaz is in the minor leagues. I have a huge problem with that. Uh, I am an, I am a former catcher in a prior life, and uh, not a fan of Cervelli. I think he's a wonderful guy, and I know he's a fan favorite, especially the women. They love him. But uh, the qual what they paid for him, they overpaid. Diaz has a gun, has an absolute cannon. He's been effective. And he's effective, and he's hit well up here. And I know right. they sent him down just to get him more reps. 
But why is Chris Stewart on this team? He should be gone. And if you're going to keep Cervelli fine, he's been managing the pitchers. I get it. But bring Diaz up, plan him in there, and start playing the kid. Mm-hmm. Well, they've already clearly stated they're only going to play Cervelli every other day. You know, sometimes three, you know, every third game or whatever. But so why not bring Diaz? I mean, Diaz is going to be the catcher next year. There's no I doubt hope. about it. And, I hope and, so. And it's kind of like it's it's like they're doing something with everywhere except for one position because everywhere else they're using the youth. They they're can't admit the, the mistake, my friend. The front office of the Pirates does not want to admit the, the financial mistake they made in Cervelli, well, and it was a mistake. And but here's my big question. Next Tuesday, when Marte is eligible to come back, what do you do with him? You're not going to take him. I mean, as much as I've criticized Andrew McCutcheon, you're not going to take him out of center field. I think they said that they're putting him in left. I'm sure that that's what Hurdle has been quoted as saying, that Marte is going in left field immediately. Okay, so where's Frazier going? I don't know. That's a good question. Well, So you can't put Harrison on the bench? No, you can't. Freeze would be the only option. He's not hitting the ball. Harrison has to go to third. Harrison (laughs) has to go to third. Um Frazier, I, he'd I don't have to know. go to second. I know. And when he's played, they're good. He That's has. That's the thing. He has. And then, and then you're looking at, you know, Josh Bell. He surprised us all. He's turning into major league first baseman. There's no like question about it. You couldn't. don't have to think. You don't have to think about the first baseman. Right. That, that's your, that's your star of the future there, Josh Bell. No question. I, I think the Pirates still, even if they add nobody, I think the Pirates still have a shot at it. They're five and set. You know, five out of their last seven I agree. games going into the break. I agree. I they're agree. on a hot streak, and and I really think, and and I know you're saying they're ten games out. Yeah, I mean you're saying that they're yeah. out of a wild card, but they're really not. They're only yeah. ten games, ten victories away from being in that second wild you're card position. You're absolutely right. So I mean, so they're really not out at this point. All right, Frank. I, I, for once, I'm actually telling my producer that yeah. we're, we're we're late. <laughs> yeah, fifty-seven. You're listening to your personal rules with Derek McKenna. Thank you for bringing us into your life this week. I promise we'll be here next week. Uh, Coming up soon is Town Hall News, but right now, stay tuned for a very special message from yours truly. God bless, and we'll see you next week.